So in this video, we're going to continue on from the, the previous one where we showed you how we could take requirements from Agile Central and import them into Agile Requirement Designer. Now we're going to show you how those requirements can be modeled in a way that you can actually not just refine the requirements, but also generate test cases. So on the screen, what we've got is a, a simple example of a, a website. So this first box up here is actually to log into the website. So we have open website. We then have an option where there are three different things could happen. We could log in as the admin, we could log in as a physician, we could log in as a patient. And each of these is the route through the website. Now, if I go into this, this option here, um, within these, these blocks, we don't just have the actual logic. What we have is, at this point, there's some automation. So for the administrator, when you log in as administrator, there's certain things we need to do. We need to click on an element on the screen. We need to enter the admin user. We need to enter the password. We need to click the, the login box. So that's the, the higher level flow. On the right hand side, these are what we call the code snippets. So we're using Selenium in this example. So this is the, no, for, these are all the things we need to do. We need to click. We need to then enter, enter, and then click. Now, the reason we do this is that if you imagine that this particular box, we have these code snippets. When we define a test case, a test case would be a linkage of all these boxes. So we're going to define a path through this model that says we'd go there first, then we'd come to here, then we'd go to there, then we'd go to there. The test case would actually be the combination of all those code snippets. So you'll get a complete test case from each path. Now, as well as the actual generating of test case scripts, we can also do things like generate test data. So we've also got the option to make system data. We can go and find system data. There's various things we can do around test data. We can do test data when you actually generate the test cases. Um, we can do test data on demand, so when the test case is run. And also we can do manual test case data, which we'll go through later. So at this point, we've got our model. We've got our, our automation components added. The next thing is now how many test cases do we need to run? So we can use our path explorer. Now the Path Explorer allows you to look at the model and understand how many test cases actually need to be run to test all the scenarios. So in the optimization in the top left, I'm just changing to say, what would every possible test case be if I were to test all the combinations? And it's saying there's 58, so the bottom there is 58. And if I click on these, we just mouse through, what you'll see is those are the different test cases. Yeah, we've worked out every route. Now on the right hand side, what you're also seeing is there's also data that comes with this. So in this case, we've got static data, but that data could be coming from our test data management system. So we could be generating data for different scenarios at the same time as the test cases. Now 58 tests, obviously we could run those quite easily, but if these were thousands of tests and we have limited time to run tests, how can we optimize our testing? So we can change this option here and actually just say, what's our max, maximum coverage if we just did the edges? And we can then get those test cases down to eight. So that's our eight test cases. They will give us maximum coverage around the edges, which is enough we need for our testing. Now, once we've done that, we can save these tests. And if we go up to here, I've already saved one. Here's the test I've saved. So that's the flow. We're going to follow this flow here. If I click on the automation button, I can generate the script. So automatically at this point, what we've done is taken those code snippets and combined them into one test case. And we can now export this to our testing framework. And we're going to do that in two, two steps. So first, what we're going to do is export this to Agile Central. Now the reason we're doing this is we want to create a test case in Agile Central so the Agile Central team know that we've actually got a test case created. So we do an export. Um, we then get to see uh, Agile Central, all the stories that I'm allowed to work with. Here's that user story 2 that we've been working with. We're going to click OK. Now automatically, you might see a little bubble pop up to say that a test case just got created in Agile Central. And if I click on the external links, we'll see uh, test case 127. So now if we went back to Agile Central, we'd see test case 127 is now associated with this particular user story. Now we could have outputted the, um, the test case itself and various other things, but we just, at this point, we've just created the test case. We want to output the script to our testing framework. So what we're now going to do is just do an output again, this time to our application test. Now this is going to use the application test product to run the test. 
we need to do a few things. Um, one is it needs a skeleton framework document, which I've just chosen. We then choose the uh, the layer automation layer we're going to use. So these are the ones we use in this example. We can actually add layers based on the, the language your testing framework is. So we're going to use the application test one. And then we just choose the location. So in this example, we're just putting this onto our testing folder and automatically our testing framework will pick it up and run it. And we're going to do that later. And I click next. So we're done. So we've now generated that test case and also created the user story in Agile Central. So that the next thing is obviously that's great. Um, but the real power of the model is change. So what if our model were to change? So if we were to look at this particular um, flow here and we went to our path explorer and we looked at our test cases, you'll see there's, there's 10, te 10 test cases there. Now, what if I were to make a change that affected those test cases? So I'm going to come in here and just remove this link down the bottom right. So I made a minor change to the, the model. If I now go back to my path explorer and we go back to our test cases, um, automatically the tool is now telling me that we have invalid test cases. The, the structure of the model no, no longer matches the test cases. These are the test cases. Now I can then choose to delete those. I can choose to repair them. It may be we delete the test cases and we just generate the test cases again. But that's the benefit of the model is we can just delete those test cases and just generate the model, uh, the test cases automatically. Now within ARD, we can also do other things. Let me just close this screen. So this flow here is created to actually create a virtual service. So this is the model of our virtual service. And we can now output this into our virtual service system. So these are different flows through our virtual our model. Now, if you look at the top right hand corner, you'll see that as I flick through it, certain things are changing. So based on the request, the response will be different. Now we need to just export this to our service virtualization product. Just say yes. So we just need to choose where it's going to resolve our data in our test data manager. So we're just going to choose that one there. And then we need to put in is the, the details. So this is going to log into your um, service virtualization server. So to log in there. Like so. Now, once I've logged in, what we'll see is, um, again, with the, the layers within the tool, we then choose what's the request layer and what's our response layer. Now, I called mine request response to make it easier. Now, at the bottom here, um, within the service virtualization tool, we have our virtual service engines. So you may have many of these when you choose one you want to deploy to. We're going to deploy it to this one here, and then we give it a name. like so. Now also we can also come in here and what we can do is we can then choose um, which port this virtual service will listen to. So we're going to output this flow to our service virtualization tool, start it. This is the port it's going to listen on. So we're going to change this to 1088. We say create service. Now automatically what we've just done is taken that flow and output it to our service virtualization. And we'll come back to that later and you'll see that virtual service. Now the final thing to show you before we actually move on with this video is to just go back to our Agile Central. Now if you remember we actually added that user story, uh, that test case to that user story. So if I just refresh the screen what we'll see is User Story 2 now has a test case. It has test case 127. Now, during the next video, we're going to show you how we then actually can further use those models within the ARD and how we can actually also drive our test data from Agile Central. Thank you.